Oh boy, that, now we're really changing subjects <laughs> into deep fakes, okay. <laughs> So, you have a question for me? Yes. Um, if social media can be used against someone in court. So, the answer to that is absolutely yes. And it happens all the time. Uh, do you ever watch any TV shows, like courtroom kind of shows or, yeah. or law shows like NCIS or something like that? Have you ever heard the Miranda right where they say, anything you say can and will be used against you? Yes. You ever heard that? That applies to social media too. Say, say you have a case where you've been injured, okay? And you're claiming that these injuries prevent you from doing things. But now all of a sudden there's even just a photograph, it doesn't have to be text, but just a photograph of you out smiling with your friends. The defense in that case is gonna take that photograph and show it to the jury and say, look folks, after this accident, well, she said she was in severe pain for weeks and months and maybe even years, and she couldn't do all of these things. Here's this picture of her. Does she look like she's in pain in this picture? There's legitimate ways that the other side can get to your social media. They can subpoena that information, but also, and I've seen this happen, right, where the defense attorney in the case has gone out and paid one of those fringe friends, somebody who you may not know that well, but they're a friend of yours on social media, to give the defense access to everything that you've posted. And so even though people think that they're protected because they have all their settings set to private, the reality is if you post it online, nothing is private. So I'm reading this book and it's called Deepfake and it's Oh about boy, that, now we're really changing subjects <laughs> into deep fakes, okay. Um, um, there's this video that pops up of um, a girl accusing her boyfriend that he cheated on the SAT. So you describe to me, what is a deep fake video? Um, it's basically like a fake video that tracks that like from videos on social media, they can take those and put them in so the machine knows how they act and stuff like that. And it created a realistic video of her accusing someone else cheating on the SAT. That's really complicated. There are, there are ways, and there are actual legal cases that deal with this, there are ways that forensic examiners, right? So people that have a real technical background in how video works and how computers process video, they're able to look at the raw data and determine whether or not a video is a fake versus real, okay? So there are people out there who can do that. I don't know, are they talking about that in your book? Yeah, they're talking about it a lot. And I haven't finished it yet, but it's getting really good where they're about to find out who it is. Got it. So, so are there? Is there actually like a forensic expert, like a like a, a computer expert that's looking at the video, trying to determine who created the fake? Yes, uh, I believe it was a guy who works at a TV company in the book, who's looking at the video, and they realize that she never blinks in it. Right. So that's a great example. If you know, we all blink. I think you just did. Yeah. And so if you're not blinking in a video, there's probably a pretty good chance it's not realistic. That's an interesting way to look at it. I think that there is now even more, um, maybe I should say less obvious ways to determine what's a deep fake. I know that there's been some recent cases where they're actually able to look at the data itself, right, and determine whether or not a video is, is real or fake. Um, and uh, uh, there are experts out there who are doing that. Well, that was pretty much it. I think you've answered all my questions. Well, thank you. We appreciate you uh, asking us a question, and I wish you the very best in your, in your future. Mm -hmm.